our next chapter or our next lecture is all about layers and so we'll talk about some essentials creating layers deleting layers things like that before I get started though I'm going to use the ice cream image um, that's on the shared stock images so if you want to get a head start you can pause the video go download that file and then open it in Photoshop and then I'll show you how to do some layer features in regard to this image it really doesn't matter what image you have open though so if you don't want to go to the website and download it just open any image but you will need to be able to create layers so you have to have document open to participate in this lecture and so now if we jump back to the lecture we can talk about what we're going to talk about and so our objectives for um, layer essentials or the basics of using layers are to understand how layers play a role in non-destructive editing of images non-destructive non-destructive editing will be a common theme throughout the semester I like to say that I'm gonna harpoon it into you right I'm gonna like stick it into you it's gonna get stuck there and it's not gonna let you go um, we will demonstrate an ability to create duplicate select rename reposition group delete hide show lock filter merge and flatten layers uh, we'll create layer groups to increase file organization we'll adjust layer opacity blending modes and apply layer effects those are kind of the fun things we'll do towards the end of the lecture and then we'll talk about the idea of merging layers or flattening layers or flattening images um, and how that affects file size and so first we need to start off with what are layers and layers are an organizational tool used in various graphic art software applications to divide and organize content they work similarly to the way that transparency projectors work for those of you that are old school like me if you're younger you may not have even seen one of these projectors but the way that it would work is that um, your teacher could put a transparency down on the light table and it would be projected onto a board and like let's say if it was history class the, the teacher may not want you to see all the notes for the entire lecture so you might put a piece of paper over part of it and he would slowly move that paper down to expose more and more of the lecture or a math class would do this a lot your math teacher would write all of the work down for a math problem but she would show you what the math problem is first and give you the he or she um, would show you what the problem is first and give you a chance to solve it and then slowly as they're explaining the process of solving it they would take the piece of paper that's blocking out the words and they would drag it down to expose the the answer and the bit it works based on the principle that whatever is sitting in front will block out whatever's on the bottom or whatever's closest to the light that's at the top of the projector will be seen before something that's beneath it and our layers panel works just like that so if our layers panel was translated to be a projector um, layer two would be the transparency at the bottom and layer three would be the piece of paper sitting in front of the answer and as you move layer three out of the way you would start to expose what's on layer two and so whatever's at the top of the layers panel is going to block out anything beneath it unless there's some other factor at play so you can change the way layers interact with each other but as a general principle the green appears to be sitting in front of the red rectangle because the green rectangle is on a layer that's closer to the top of the layers panel and this is a small example because there's only two layers but you could have 35 layers and so whatever layers at the top you're going to see all of that layer and then if something's beneath it you'll see whatever you can see that's not blocked out by the layer above every document created in Photoshop either has a default background layer or layer one so whenever you open a document it has to have that um, in order to edit documents that come with a default background layer so documents that are not artboards or documents where you open a file that already has an image in it you can't edit that background so in order to be able to edit that file you either have to duplicate the background and make a copy of it or you have to convert the background layer to be a regular layer and if you do that it will become layer zero you can create a new layer or you can duplicate the background by right clicking on it and choosing to duplicate the layer and then you'll have two of them and so you can edit the one that's not the background or you can double click on the background layer a dialog box will appear and it will say well do you want to change this to be a regular layer and we're going to call it layer zero and so let's take a minute to jump to Photoshop and we'll do that really quickly and so I've got the image open that I'm working with and I'm going to undock this layers panel so that we can see it I'm even going to zoom in a little bit on it so don't worry that you can't see the image and so let's center this and so right now if I tried to do anything to this image I wouldn't be able to do it because the, the background layer is locked so I couldn't delete this content I couldn't add new content I'm going to deselect so you can see that what you can do is you can right click and you can 
duplicate the layer, or you can even make a layer from the background. If you duplicate it, you're going to end up with two layers. You have the background that's still locked by default, or you can create a background copy. This is a form of non-destructive editing because now I can do whatever I want to this background copy, and if I mess up, I have the original to get back to. You can also, if we undo that, you can double click on the background layer. It will launch the new layer dialog box and say that the new layer is going to be layer zero. And when you select OK, it now has converted your layer from a background to a layer. Either option is OK. I kind of like the option of duplicating better just because it, it has a backup for you. If you destroy the background copy and just mess it up completely and you don't know what you did, you could delete this layer and go back to the background and start all over again. But if you had converted it to be a regular layer and you edit it and you saved it and you closed out and you came back and you're just like, oh, I messed that up, you wouldn't have anything to go back to to start over.